Hello, it's Rafael Gutierrez. Welcome to our channel. Now, today I'm going to talk about koshi and what I like to call soft arm punches. These are when your arms are relatively soft and you just punch. They're pretty much the only thing that's tight is your fist. Now, I actually found that uh, my style of karate and other styles of karate aren't the only ones who use this. I actually have found that some kung fu will actually use a lot of these to get these whipping motions. So it is one thing that is found in different arts. I think I met one boxer in uh, Mexico who was using the same punches, so it's used there. Now, there are certain things I want I'm going to talk about, and one of the things uh, uh, a uh, colleague of mine, uh, Noah, who runs the uh, Karate Obsessions, he actually talked about how he looks at different sports to see how he is using his Karate. I've actually done roughly the same thing. And, you know, actually, sometimes I will say I watch other people's videos and uh, sometimes I get embarrassed because I watch something and it's almost identical to what I had done in the what I had done in the past. But theirs actually was done even before mine. And so I feel like, oh, geez, you know, I feel like, you know, it's not that not good to copy someone else. But at the same time, sometimes, you know, I am trying to give my own spin on it. And so hopefully nobody minds if I uh, copy them a little bit. But like the night thing is. Now, with the internet, we have so many great martial art channels that we can use, and I would recommend looking at a lot of them. Now, the other thing I'm actually going to mention before I talk about Koshi is my own one of my own character flaws, and believe me, I have many. Uh, one of the ones I'm going to talk about is my modesty. I'm just kidding. Uh, one of the ones I'm going to talk about is my arrogance, and what I mean by that is this: a lot of times. We, I have the character flaw of thinking of myself a certain way and thinking what I know and holding on to what I know with both hands. And a lot of times I've actually found that when I actually start listening to other people and looking at what they're doing, sometimes I find that, you know, my way wasn't the best. I can modify it and do a couple things. I'm going to borrow from what they're telling me. And sometimes I find that some of the stuff that I thought was correct was wrong. And sometimes I hear someone and immediately my mind goes to what they said rather than, than what they're trying to say. What I mean by that is this. Uh, I've actually always avoided using the word koshi when I talk about uh, stri uh, strikes of the body that are weak. The reason is I've ha I have run into people who talk about koshi and they're hitting everywhere, slapping, and it's, they're saying, oh, if you slap here, this is, X is going to happen. And a lot of times I think, well, you know, I don't see the anatomical reason for why. Now, the other day I was again looking on YouTube and I there was a gentleman who was talking about Koshi and he was actually talking about certain hitting certain areas. And as I watched this, I started thinking, you know, he has a point. A lot of the areas he's talking about striking break or there's a nerve point there which can end up causing a lot of pain. And so I was able to say, well, okay, look, if we're talking about Koshu, you know, yes, if you're talking about anatomical sites where things break, you can find those. You can actually take an anatomy class and do them yourself. And you can confirm them with that too. Now, you can probably confirm it with uh, Chinese medicine if you study that. I always say I feel unqualified to talk about that because I've never studied it. But there is another thing, another person who I was watching who was talking about striking nerve points. And I didn't listen to him initially because of the vocabulary he used. He actually said, oh, if you come over here, you can attack the intestinal nerve. And in my mind, I started thinking, intestinal nerve, why would be going here with the intestinal nerve? This person doesn't understand anatomy. Now, as I took a step back and started to think about what he was actually saying, I had to remember that there is a nerve that goes from the brain down through the carotid arc, down through the carotid triangle, down to the intestines, stomach and intestines, called the vagus nerve. And then I thought, oh, what he's calling the intestinal nerve is really the vagus nerve. He just, you know, learned it a different way. And so I was able to actually look and see this person does have the knowledge that he's talking about. He just doesn't have the right vocabulary, and that's fine. I, if you want the right vocabulary, I can give it to you. And so that's one of the big things that I've actually, you know, a lot of my character flaws deal with. It's, you know, sometimes we get stuck on looking at the looking at the vocabulary rather than what the person's actually trying to say. Now, 
when I talk about Koshi, I'm going to talk about my version, the Koshi that I, as I understand. And before I talk, even talk about that, there are certain things that I did find that were pretty interesting. One is, a lot of times people said that before you start teaching Koshi to your students, they should have a basic understanding of how to have linear movements with their arms. And the reason is if they don't get it with their arms before, they may not get it with Koshi because they're relying and may end up getting actually more speeds and you might not be able to see it. The other thing, some of the sites, who were, especially the ones that were talking about Koshi, it talked about taking your shoulders, bringing them back and down, so it maintains a shoulder joint, the actually gonohumoral joint, in a nice alignment so you'd avoid tears in the uh, joint. And again, that's actually something that, I, as I read it, said, yes, you know, that makes perfect sense. Now, there are some things that people talk about in Koshi, and it may be because they only got a basic understanding of it or because it wasn't explained to them fully. Now, one of the things that someone I read about and someone mentioned is the problem with Koshi is it's slow because you have to uh, preload the hips. Now the truth is the hips are already preloaded. And that actually goes to another thing I ended up reading which had to do with the uh, some people talking about the exaggerated movements in Koshi. And again someone who actually taught it talked about how the exaggerated movements are a way to teach the beginners but eventually you want to get rid of the exaggerated movement and make the movement smaller so you can't see it. Now, I am going to show a video of me using my bow and using hips and talking about that. But before I talk about that, there is one other thing I would really, it would really be a disservice if I didn't mention it before we I talk about Koshi. And that's something called the kinematic chain. Now, if you Google kinematic chain, you'll end up seeing a lot of stuff on physical therapy. You'll end up seeing a lot of stuff on uh, throwing baseballs, on gymnastics. It's actually the way that people have found the human body works best, where it produces more power and more forces. It's also a concept in physics. The idea is this, if you have one area which is heavy and it's attached to something which has a joint that can move around a little, which is lighter, the heavier thing can produce a force and the lighter thing can end up getting more momentum. Now, what happens is, the uh, not momentum, I'm sorry, acceleration, the momentum stays about the same. So the thing is, the amount of force that you have that's being used to move an object, when it's actually transferred by a, some sort of joint, uh, kind of loose joint, it actually ends up increasing the acceleration as the mass decreases. And so you maintain the same force, it's just the, the speed of that force tends to be uh, bigger. And so you end up having, if you think about it, if I push you versus I use all the force that I use to push you to just throw one punch in a couple seconds, that force is applied in less time, so you end up having more more uh, more in the uh, collision. Which I'll let anyone who uh, knows physics talk more about it if you don't mind uh, to put it in the comment. As I will talk a little bit about what I mean by the hips already preloaded. Now, one of the things to remember is. When we're talking about Koshi, a lot of people have different names for it, have different ideas for it. So I'm going to use mine. Now, I'm coming this slow because you can see my knees here, my ribs just here, just under the camera. And when we're talking about Koshi, we're talking about from the knee all the way to the lower ribs. So just where you see the black line. Now, what I mean that the hips are already loaded is this. So we're going to use all the muscles of the legs. And one of the things is that the legs don't go straight down. They actually go at an angle. And here, on this side and here, you have your adductors. Now, your adductors do help you bring your legs together. But if you use one adductor and not the other, it is going to give you a bit of a movement of the hips. So you can actually use that. The gluteal region can also. Yes, it can be used to extend the leg. But if you're standing on a leg, this, the gluteal can end up being used to drive the hips forward, to drive, if I contract this one, I can use it to drive the hip forward. Now, like I said, the hips are, are, are already preloaded, meaning if my belly button's here, this area here can pull to cause it to move here, or this area can cause it to move here. Now, if I'm gonna use the my version of Nahanshi here, if I'm using my arm here, and I'm using the rotation, 
here, I'm going to over exaggerate. What happens is if you watch the momentum of my hand from here to here, you actually see a rapid acceleration. If I try to just use my arm, I'm not going to get as rapid as an acceleration. And if I maintain and just use my hips, again, you have the same force but not acceleration. And so it just ends up being more of a push rather than a collision, which, which force is transferred uh, quickly. And so that's what I mean is you're actually using all the muscles. And so you don't have to preload the hips because your both of your hips are preloaded just based on the normal structure of the body. So I'm going to show you the video, which will explain a little more. I hope you enjoy this. Uh, please, if you like this, subscribe. If you have any questions, please ask. Uh, and if, if you just want to tell me that you uh, enjoy these, I really, I like it. It helps my ego. Uh, and uh, yeah, let me know what you think. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to get something out. I figure April is coming soon. Maybe I'll do something on, uh, you know, the best clothes to, uh, for a street fight as a joke. Uh, so I don't know, maybe something like that. We'll see what happens. Thank you and have a good day. Hello everyone, I'm Rafael Gutierrez and uh, welcome to our channel. Today I'm going to talk about Koshi and I'm actually going to be stepping back a bit so you can see the entire body. One of the things that I found is a lot of people seem not to understand it uh, too well. They think that you have to cock back and what Koshi, as far as I can see, I'll fix the camera so you can see me more, Koshi is using pretty much from the your knee here all the way to your lower ribs to uh, all those muscles to tend to, to get power. Now I'm using the bow so you can see something. Our spine and most of the muscles that cause rotation are going to be around the spine. There's a lot of them but they're very little and so working together they can't develop power moving if we get in uh, what uh, some people call chukodachi here. If you maintain your weight here you can get some rotation here and you, but most of it is going to be minimal. Some people actually will use a bounce to get more power. Now there's a lot of different ways to get power. And some of them you can use together. Some of them kind of interfere with each other. So a lot of times you have to figure out where you need power. Now the reason I'm using the bow is it shows you the line. So if I am set here, all my force is coming here. If you think of this, it would be, the muscles would be coming here. The, Spinal column is about two inches, so if you were to take a look at my thumb, it would be about here to here. That would be about the uh, area of the muscles. So all the little muscles are going to be here in the back, and they're going to be pulling in one direction. So they're going to get this little movement across the spine like this. Now, if you know anything about physics and you know lever mechanics, you know that if you're just using these muscles, if you're just using this little space, the amount of force is going to be this is going to be greater than for the power you need than if you are farther out. So what I'm going to tell you about Koshi is we're now going to use the muscles of the leg, inside of the leg called the adductor groups, the gluteus muscles, and you're actually going to use even your hamstrings. Now, if you think about this, if I, I can ro rotate across here and you can see that yes, I can get that movement and it's going to be a lot of force for the distance I get. If I come over here, I actually can use less force to get the same distance. It's just a mechanical advantage. You are going to actually lose some, but it actually becomes easier for you to move here. Now, in Koshi, some people think you're going to pull back and then come here. And so you get this movement here. If I'm punching with this hand, people think I'm going to come this way. Now, if you watch the belt knot, and I always tell people, the you know, it has a lot of benefits. If I'm just using this movement here, I'm not using my glute, gluteal muscles, which are some of the bigger ones, but I am, can get this rotation here. This is power, you can actually talk about different powers. So if you're here and you're just moving like this, this is first power. You're not actually using a lot of your muscles. Second power, it would be using your legs too here. Third power would be using everything together. Now, you have muscles inside the legs called the adductors, you have the gluteus, you have the quadriceps, and so we want to use as much muscles as we can to get the arm. Now, for this, a lot of people think you have to pull back and punch like you would in a movie. Now, yes, you can get a lot of power from this. And the way I actually was looking at how to do this was actually a little different. Usually I look at baseball because you can see 
that movement. This time I actually looked at chocolate. And in chocolate, you they are trying to get a higher, trying to get it about 40, I think it was 43 degrees is the maximum you need for the maximum angling angulation you need to get a, the uh, best uh, farthest distance. But what we're trying to do is we're actually trying to generate as much power as we can here. Now, yes, you can come back and come over here and use a lot of muscle groups, but you can also, from here, just come here. So the idea would be here. Now, remember, the muscles are moving here, and you're using your uh, gluteus maximus, your adductors, adductors will actually try to pull here. So if you're coming, pushing this way, you're actually using the adductors to, instead of pull the leg here, to move the rest of the spine here. You are gonna use the ones inside, but you don't have to pull back. What I mean is, if you watch my belt notch here, I can get the movement here. And you don't need a lot of it because what you're using is you're using the entire mass for the acceleration to get maximum acceleration and you're switching it here. So the idea is not to go one, two, but just go one. And so when you do this, depending on how, fa how fast you can move here and stop it, you actually get more acceleration. In essence, what you're doing is two things. One is instead of trying to move here to here like this, you're now moving out here. You're also, instead of using just muscles here, you're using muscles that pull, that push, and your arm is going to use all that muscle, all that force you generate to throw the arm. Now, a lot of people say, well, you know, how do you do this? Well, it depends where you're punching. If you're punching low, for instance, you can use the legs and your weight to shift from here forward. If you watch the, any of the videos on uh, uh, Shotgun, you'll see how they actually throw from here, actually here, and then come up. Now, we're not gonna try to come up, we also wanna maintain our balance. So here, we can actually use our muscles here, quadriceps group, we're actually using our glute, gluteal muscles here to pull. Actually, we're gonna pull a little here, and so you can get, end up getting this entire movement here. Now, if you look here, and watch the belt. From here, if you look at almost like an ikudashi, you come here, it's a kutsudash. It's actually kind of a nice thing. You can now see how we can use the stances from here to here. Now, I don't have to move my hips that much. If I'm standing here, for instance, this is natural. Here, I've used my hips. Now, as I've come here, if I want to punch with the other hand, here. And so what you have is, you can have the hip here. Now, again, if you watch the belt, from kind of a shukadachi, relax. You know, I didn't have to pull back and punch. I can just from here, punch and pull back. And so you can get more of the power by using more of the muscles. Again, you're using all your legs. You're actually using your torso, your all the muscles, and the ones in your back. Hope you enjoy this. Have a nice day.